One of the challenges home coffee roasters have is identifying the events that are taking place during the coffee roasting process. We're going to talk about that today and why it is so important and how we can know what these events are. So stick around. All right, thank you for joining me here today at the Virtual Coffee Lab. Coffee roasting events are very important because each of these is a signal of how our roast is doing. They give us information about how our roast is progressing and how we should adjust our heat or adjust uh, the rate of our temperatures increasing or decreasing and ultimately uh, bringing us to the end, which is a great cup of coffee. So I've identified coffee roasting events that I feel are really important. You may have some other ones, uh, and that's fine. Share those in the comments. I would love to hear those as well. But with all of these events, the main idea here is that in order to be able to improve our roasts, we need to be writing these events down. I've talked about that in several other videos. So the assumption is, is that you're writing down your important events, writing down the times and the temperatures of when that event occurs. This is really an important milestone or an important event because the temperature that you charge these beans at is going to influence how long it's going to take for you to get through the first phase of coffee roasting, which is the dry phase. It's also going to impact the beans as far as roasting defects go. So if our charge temperature is too high, we are more likely to have roasting defects. Depending upon the type of coffee that you're using, you're going to choose a different charge temperature. But ultimately, it's an event that we need to record. And I've got other videos that deal with the charge temperature, and you'll see those in my essentials playlist, as well as searching my channel for charge temperature. I did a video just for charge temperature. The next event is turning point. Turning point isn't necessarily something that you can identify unless you have logging software or you're really charting your times and temperatures. And that is when the bean temperature, at least the uh, illusion of the bean temperature of what we're seeing, when it changes from a declining rate of rise to a increasing rate of rise for our bean temp, then that is turning point. And that's an event that we want to mark because we want to be able to compare that to other events or have an expectation of what's happening with our roast. I'm going to be devoting a video just to turning point, so I won't go into a lot of detail right now, but turning point is an event that you should mark and that you should be aware of and be able to identify. dry end. This is a mark or an event that takes place at the end of dry where we have looked at the beans visually and seen that they are no longer green. There's no green left in the beans. They have just completed that phase and now they are full yellow. That's when we mark dry end. Now some of you may mark your dry end at different times and that's not critical so if there's just a little bit of green left that's okay the most important thing is is that you mark it consistently roast after roast after roast all right so why is marking dry end important because it's going to tell us and influence the rest of the roast it's going to tell us how our roast is progressing and it's going to tell us whether we have this roast under control and also it's going to help us understand how much time we need to spend in this next phase. Without marking dry end, you won't have any idea of what to do with the middle phase the browning. You won't have any idea of how much development. And a lot of people don't really think about this event. They see it happen, they watch it, but they let it go by. And their event, the only thing they care about is first crack. And from there, they'll just say, okay, a minute and a half after first crack, and I'm done, and I've roasted coffee. Dry end is going to tell you how much time to spend in browning and in development. It's really, really important. So that, that's an event you need to mark. First crack. First crack is the event that everybody talks about, and it's an important one to mark. 
when you market is even more important because it can be tricky when to call first crack. Sometimes first crack is very quiet depending upon the beans you're using. Sometimes we hear some cracking, but it's not the beginning of first crack. Those are what we call outliers. It's important for us to wait and consistently choose first crack at the same time for each roast. And that is a succession of cracks. So first crack should be first cracks. That's one of the sayings that a lot of home coffee roasters use. When we hear multiple cracks and we know first crack has begun, you mark that event. Why is that important? That's really important because it ends the browning phase, which will show us on future roasts how we might want to adjust that phase as far as sweetness goes or as far as fruitiness. And also, um, it's going to help us know how long our development phase should be. So at the beginning of first crack, when we hear those successions, that's an important, really important event to mark. Second crack. A lot of us may not go to second crack, but there's quite a few of us that do. And it's important to be able to know when second crack begins because you are trying to achieve not only a certain development percentage, but you want certain notes in your coffee. You are roasting to knock down some of the sweetness and to give some of that smoky, darker, bold, um, roasty flavor notes. But knowing when second crack begins is really important because some of you will wait till just second crack just starts to begin and then you'll drop the beans. So knowing when that event occurs is really important. Second crack sounds different because it is a higher pitch snap. It's not necessarily a crack, it's more of a snap. Now, those that roast quickly and have shorter roasts, it's sometimes very difficult to differentiate first crack and second crack because you're moving so quickly through the roast that the two cracks are combined and I've called it the, the crack session, which is basically first and second crack together. And those are people that either are intentionally doing that to have enough momentum to move their way through to get a real dark roast. Or if you're not really trying to get a real dark roast, you need to slow your roast down and that way you will have a span of time between first crack and second crack. For those that are roasting in kind of a medium roast, first crack should end and there should be a pause of cracking before second crack begins. And that's going to tell you that you haven't moved too quickly through your roast. Cooling event. Now, some people, and it's something that is really, it's not critical to do as far as the roast goes, but it's an event that we mark as far as logging goes because how long we let those beans cool or how long it takes to cool can influence the flavor of the coffee. If it's taking you four minutes to cool your coffee, then the truth is, is that coffee is still roasting when you drop it out of the roaster and it's going to affect the development length of that roast. Ideally, you want to get the coffee out of the roaster as quick as possible. So why is this important for us to be able to mark these events and how is that going to influence our coffee roast and other roasts that we do in the future. Well, I've shared some of the reasons why you want to mark your events along here in uh, each of the phases or each of the events that I talked about. But I've got four reasons why we really need to be logging what we have and why these events are so important. The first one is so that we can accurately document our phases. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I've got the essentials playlist up in the corner here. But ultimately, we need to identify and know exactly how long each of our three coffee phases are. The dry phase, the browning phase, and the development phase. And we're not going to be able to do that unless we can accurately mark these events. So from roast to roast to roast, every time we're marking green to yellow, or we're marking the dry end event in exactly the same way, the exact visual. 
And most of the time we can do that. I've done videos on decaf. I did that monsoon malabar, which is a completely weird coffee that is very hard to know when dry end has hit and when the coffee has gone from green to yellow. And the, the green to yellow isn't an instant. The green to yellow is a transition, but there is a point when there's no more green. And so you need to consistently from roast to roast to roast to roast know when that event is. Same thing with first crack. We need to know consistently when you begin first crack so that you can mark that. So the next time you roast that coffee, you'll know how to tweak that profile. You know how to tweak that time in, in that phase. So accurately marking these events is really, really important. All right, the second reason why it's important for us to be able to mark all of these events is to familiarize yourself with the process of roasting coffee and what's happening to our coffee during that process. So when we know that dry end has hit, then we know that most of the moisture has been removed from that bean but the coffee is entering this browning phase now and there's going to be some really wonderful reactions that take place because of the heat we're applying to the beans. This flavor profile is going to be developed in this browning phase and in the development phase it's going to be influenced as well. We have an opportunity to balance the cup and to really fine tune how we want this coffee to be in that development phase. So these events are important to know and become familiar with so that when we roast our coffee we know what's happening and it helps us understand the process. All right, the third reason why it's so important for us to know what these events are and to mark them properly is because it's going to give us consistency between roasts. From one roast to the next we'll be able to replicate what we're doing because the time that we're marking these events is consistent. It's the same and we understand why we're doing it. I roasted some coffee this week and uh, it's a wonderful coffee and because I've marked the events, because I have marked each of the important milestones, I'm able to replicate that roast and I'll be able to enjoy it next week and the week after. It's really important. All right, the third reason why we want to identify our events is to remove variables, right? So sometimes the variable is the temperatures we start at, or sometimes it's airflow. But truthfully, a variable can be how we mark and when we mark our events. And so we want to remove that variable by simply doing it consistently, and then it just becomes natural. All right, before I get to my last point, I want to thank you guys for subscribing. Two really important things. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. That really helps me out. The other is, if you haven't taken my poll on my community tab asking you what type of coffee roaster you're using, please check that out and complete that. That would really help me out. I appreciate it. All right, the last point, the fourth point of why it's so important for us to be able to identify our events consistently is because we want to be able to transfer this wonderful roast that we just had and we want to be able to replicate that on the next time we roast that coffee or we want to take that profile that's worked so well for this high density Ethiopian that the next time we have a high density Ethiopian even if it's a different coffee more than likely this is going to be a profile a time in the phases and a profile that's going to work really well for us. So transferring this and being able to apply it to another roast is so important and we can do that simply by identifying our events consistently and accurately. I have several videos that are really important that are related to this but if you watch my three tips for home coffee roasting and that talks about the three phases and the events for each phase. And then I also have a playlist that deals with some of my roasts. You should watch that playlist because it's got some roasts on there that I've done that you can watch and see some of the highlights from. And you'll want to look at the events, watch the times, and see how I mark them. And most of the time I'm talking about those things. And so check that playlist out. They, both of those links should be right here. We'll see you next time. Have a great week.